Jeremiah chapter 38. Thank God for the good preaching we've heard this week. Praise the Lord. Good singing and preaching. I've sort of got a little bit of a cold. I hope you'll pray for me. The Lord will help me tonight. Verse number 6. The Bible said, Then took they Jeremiah and cast him into the dungeon of Malchiah, the son of Hamalek, that was in the court of the prison. And they let down Jeremiah with cords. And in the dungeon there was no water but mire. So Jeremiah sunk in the mire. Now when Abedmelech the uh, Ethiopian, one of the eunuchs which was in the king's house, heard that they had put Jeremiah in the dungeon, the king then sitting at the gate of Benjamin, Abedmelech went forth out of the king's house and spake to the king, saying, The Lord, uh, my Lord the king, these men have done evil in that all that they have done to Jeremiah the prophet, whom thou hast cast into the dungeon. He is like to die for hunger in the place where he is, for there is no bread in the city. And the king commanded to Abedmelech the Ethiopian, saying, Take from hence thirty men with thee, and take up Jeremiah the prophet out of the dungeon before he die. So Abedmelech took uh, the uh, uh, took with him and uh, the men with him, and went into the house of the king under the treasury, and took thence the old, old cast cloths and old rotten rags, and let them down by cords into the dungeon to Jeremiah. And Abedmelech the Ethiopian uh, said unto Jeremiah, Put now these old cast cloths and rotten rags under thy, thine armholes, under the cords. So Jeremiah did so. So they drew up Jeremiah with cords and took him up out of the dungeon. And Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison. Now, I've been in some valleys. Probably you've been in some valleys, been in a few low places in my Christian life. But here's a man of God locked up in the dungeon. Amen. And the verse said, in verse 6, Jeremiah sunk uh, or sunk in the mire. I'd like to preach tonight for just a few minutes on this thought. And if the Lord would be merciful and touch me. I'd like to preach on help that's there when you're in the mire. Amen. Uh, now, everybody would agree that old Jeremiah is God's man. He was God's man in a time of crises, uh, in a time of chaos, in a time of conflict. Uh, and I'm thankful that God has always got a man. Amen. Uh, in time of darkness, God has a man. And uh, in a time of danger and despair, God always has got a man who will stand uh, Uh, with God's message, amen, uh, and say, Thus saith the Lord. And I believe that God allowed old Jeremiah to go through uh, uh, these times of trouble and sorrow, uh, uh, through these times of suffering, uh, uh, that he could help others, amen, uh, uh, who face these things in their life. Uh, And now Jeremiah, the man of God, probably uh, uh, suffered more ridicule uh, uh, than all the other uh, Old Testament prophets, uh, uh, they lied on this man of God. They scandalized him. Uh, and uh, the devil did all that he could do to sink him uh, down into the mire of despair. Uh, and uh, bro, we're in this meeting this week. Boy, it's been good. Hallelujah. Uh, we've been a shouting and a singing and a worshiping. Uh, but we got to go back to the battle next week. Amen. Uh, and uh, bro, don't think the devil's forgot about you. Uh, he'll still be around. Amen. Uh, listen, he wants to sink you in the mire. Our dear friend, uh, but I'm glad, hallelujah to God, uh, uh, helps there when you're in the mire, amen. Uh, uh, like what Paul said, he said, uh, uh, we're more than conquerors uh, uh, through him who loved us. Uh, uh, like what he said, uh, uh, he said, for we all, for we know that all things uh, uh, work together for good to them that love God. Uh, uh, that are called according to His purpose. Uh, I like it when He said, uh, I can do all things through Christ, uh, uh, which strengtheneth me. Uh, I like it when He said, none of these things move me, uh, uh, that I might finish my course with joy. 
Amen. I like it when he said we have all sufficiency of all grace in all things. Hallelujah. And we ought to just call about a 30 minute recess and shout a while. Bless God. Because we are never alone. When you're down there by yourself, you're not alone. Hallelujah. Uh, there's one been promised uh, uh, that he'd be with you. Amen. Uh, and the brother, uh, uh, he's got all power in heaven and earth. Uh, and he'll lift you out uh, uh, when you're in the mire. Amen. Yeah. Holy Ghost is still real. And the blood ain't never going to lose its power. So we can shout. Amen. May find ourselves sinking in the mire. But I'm glad we've been blood bought and our names are written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. And the brother, we got some help. Uh, thank God my name's written down. Uh, somebody, Brother Ronnie Roberts down in Alabama come to me one time and uh, told me, said, I met Harry Nixon uh, the other day. And I said, Ronnie, you've known me a long time. And he said, no. And I said, I met Harry Nixon. I said, uh, he's on death row in Alabama uh, penitentiary waiting to die. Uh, but I thought by the grace of God that could have been me. Amen. Uh, but 31 years ago, hallelujah, he wrote my name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I'm saved tonight. Amen. I thank God. I got a, I got a boy that's 27 years old. He's my pastor. He pastors a church there. I've got a brother that pastors a church uh, up in Dawsonville, Georgia, uh, Harvest Baptist Church. Uh, uh, he's 11 years younger than me. And, uh, and uh, about a year ago now, uh, somewhere about a year ago, uh, uh, they called me and said they was making a book uh, on the Nixes uh, and said they wanted to put my, uh, our names in it, you know, and uh, wanted me to send them some uh, uh, photographs of my family and my son's family and my brother's family and uh, they wanted to do uh, uh, little stories about us, you know, and put us in there, three preachers uh, uh, out of the Knicks clan, you know. Uh, uh, but, you know, we got to doing some study about that. I got to do some research. Uh, and we found out this. Uh, uh, my grandfather, uh, uh, my daddy's uh, daddy, uh, uh, his mom and dad, my great-grandfather uh, uh, was John Henry Nix. Uh, uh, but uh, they got to uh, check it around. They found out... Uh, uh, that he, he and uh, uh, my great-great-grandmother, Matilda Bowers, never did get married. Uh, uh, they just lived together. Uh, and on the birth certificate, uh, uh, it's got it that my granddad was the son of John Nix uh, and Matilda Bowers, and they never was married. Uh, and, brother, when they found that out, uh, uh, they didn't want to put us in the book. Uh, uh, they decided they wouldn't put our names uh, in the book. But I'm glad, hallelujah, uh, 31 years ago at an altar of prayer, uh, I'm glad there wasn't nobody come up and said, Hey, boy, uh, uh, who was your grandpa? Uh, uh, what was your granddaddy's name? Uh, uh, where'd you come from? Uh, I'm glad, thank God, uh, uh, they wrote my name down in the book of heaven. Uh, and it can never be touched. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. On the winning side. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. We'll give you three things in the book of Jeremiah. I want to mention real quick on this thought. Help this there. When we're in the mire. I'll say first there's help in the bread. When you're in the mire, verse chapter 38, here's this man of God sinking in the mire. But here in this verse, it talks about an Ethiopian man that cared about the man of God. He was concerned about what happened to the man of God. I tell you, how the devil's a liar, amen, he's a low down, a filthy liar. He'll tell you there ain't nobody that cares uh, he'll tell you everybody's glad that you're in the mire uh, and that trouble has come. Uh, and he'll tell you no one cares about you. Uh, but I found out, Brother Willie, somebody cares, thank God. Uh, uh, somebody really does care. Uh, uh, somebody loves you. Somebody's praying for you. Uh, amen. I know we've got a lot of demises. Uh, I know we've got a lot of Alexander the Coppersmith. Uh, I know we've got a lot of John Marks. Uh, but thank God I'm glad we got some Luke's. Amen. Uh, and we got some Timothy's. Uh, and brother, we got 
some folks uh, that'll stay with you uh, and help you, thank God. Uh, and this uh, Ethiopian man, uh, uh, when the man of God was sinking down in the mire, uh, uh, he wanted to be a help to him. Hallelujah. He went to the king and said, No, uh, uh, he said, they've done the preacher man wrong. I uh, said, uh, They've hurt the man of God. Uh, I said, let me go, get him out. And the king said, you take 30 men with you and go down there and get him. And I know that uh, evidently this uh, uh, Ethiopian was a worker in the treasury of the king. And he went down there. And for some reason, down through the years, uh, he'd been taking old uh, uh, rags and uh, uh, cast cloth and just been sticking them back here and there. And he, uh, he saw that man of God down there in that hole. And he thought about them old rags. And he went over there and got them rags and went up there to get the man of God out of that hole. And he pulled that top back on that hole. I could see old Jeremiah sinking down in the mire. And brother, the muck in the mire. And he looks up and here's this man with tears in his eyes, a compassion in his heart. And he said, Hey, man of God. I didn't come to hurt you. I didn't come to spit on you. I didn't come to write no articles about you. I come to help you. Hallelujah. I come to lift you up out of the mire. And he said, uh, here's a cord to take these old cast cloth and put them up under your armpit. No doubt Jeremiah, when they put him down in there, he just took a hold of that rope and slid down. Probably burned his hand. This old man didn't want to hurt the man of God. He said, you just put them under your armpits now. He said, we'll pull you out and we'll pick you up. I think about over the years, uh, Brother uh, Willie, folks that have helped me. Uh, sure, there's been a lot, uh, uh, Brother, uh, that's uh, tried to hurt me. Uh, but I'm glad by far uh, that there's been more that's cushioned for me. Uh, and the brother been uh, uh, willing to spend and be spent and to help me. Uh, amen. And uh, the, hey, them old rotten rags might not have meant much to a lot of folks. Uh, but they meant a whole lot to that preacher. Uh, when he lifted him up uh, out of that pit, uh, I can see him. Uh, uh, brother hanging on to that rope. Uh, and that black man. Uh, and them 30 other men standing around there with drawn swords. Uh, that nobody's going to mess with the preacher. That we've come to help the man of God. I'm glad when you feel like there's no nobody cares. God will let somebody come along. Some saint of God that'll care about you, interest in him, not hurt you. Somebody's a praying for you. Somebody's uh, will come by and encourage you and help you. I'm glad, brother, uh, uh, helps there when you're in the mire. Help from the brethren. Uh, I look around this room tonight, uh, and I see men who've helped me, uh, uh, men who've loved me and prayed for me. Uh, I tell you, everybody's not putting you in the mire. Uh, uh, thank God there's some coming to help you out. Uh, I remember when I left my church uh, and went into evangelism, uh, I went down to Danny Chapel's meeting, and Brother Willard was there, and, uh, Brother Willard got out of the car and he come uh, and put his arms around me. And he said, Preacher, I want you to know uh, that this ain't the end. Uh, that this is the beginning. Uh, that said, you're just starting. Hallelujah. I tell you, but I had maybe five or six meetings. Uh, that really meant something. This old preacher boy, uh, that a man of God, he prayed with me and encouraged me. Uh, and others across the country, uh, uh, Brother uh, Estep uh, and others, Brother Drummond uh, and folks that's trying to help me and, uh, uh, and uh, encourage me. Uh, uh, thank God uh, uh, we've got some help. Uh, everybody's not against you. Uh, everybody don't hate you. Uh, uh, there's some that loves you. Hallelujah. Hey. God's still got some folks like the old time way. 
Sometimes I get a little dis discouraged. And I think, what in the world am I going to do when some of these old-fashioned preachers leave their churches and pass off the sea? I'm an embarrassment to son. The way I carry on, you know. But there's some that like the old time way. And then I come to a meeting like this. And I meet some young fellas and some new people that say, Boy, I like that hacking. And uh, I w I'm going to have it at my place. Say, Man, hadn't a brother? Uh, uh, thank God there's still some folks uh, that love the old time preaching. Amen. Hey, thank God there's help in the brethren. You remember when you were going through that crisis in your life? Uh, uh, might have been a death in your family. When, uh, uh, when that uh, death angel came and snatched out that mom or dad or that boy or that girl, that loved one, uh, and the brother, you were broken hearted, uh, and you were sitting in that little old folding chair there at the funeral home, uh, and the door opened. Uh, and here comes somebody that loves you. And somebody that you know was praying for you. And put their arms around you. Now they couldn't do nothing to get your mama, your daddy, your boy, girl out of that coffin. But they can whisper a word of comfort and say, I love you. Hallelujah. Help you. Glad we're not in this fire safe. There's hell in the bread. When you're sinking in the mouth. Give you something else. There's hope in the Bible. When you're sinking in the mouth. Hey. Chapter 20. Old Jeremiah got to the place where a lot of us have been. Uh, he said, I'm through. He said, I'm throwing it in. I'm done. I'm backing up. I'm quitting. Uh, no use to go on. Uh, I pastored there all those years, uh, Brother Bill Tucker. Uh, there's no telling at the times I come in on Sunday night, uh, uh, pull my tie off and threw it in the corner and said, I'm quitting. I'm done. Uh, maybe not tell anybody. Uh, let nobody know anything about it. Uh, but in my heart, uh, Brother, I'd, I'd quit uh, and get discouraged and get down. Uh, but before Monday or before Wednesday came around, uh, thank God get to sit around uh, like old Jeremiah did. Uh, he got to sit there thinking about never preaching again. Uh, and something got to stirring around in his heart. Uh, hey, hey, uh, the Bible said, but his word uh, was in my heart uh, as a burning fire shut up in my bones. Uh, and I was weary uh, with forbearing. Uh, and I could not stay. Uh, hey, hey, uh, there's been times I've quit, uh, uh, but God wouldn't let me. Uh, uh, he'd stir up that preacher in my heart. Uh, uh, put that word of God burning in my soul. you're sinking in the mire. Thank God there's hope in the Bible. It'll start a heartburn that rollways can't do nothing with. I don't know about you, but I've come to the house of God. I've come to meetings like this. Be going through one of them dungeon times. Sinking in the mire. Looked like there wasn't no way out. And some good man of God, some good preacher, full of the Holy Ghost, I would stand up with a Holy Bible in his hand, God in his heart, and the brother, uh, he'd stir up my heart, and the brother preached the Word of God to me, and put some faith in my heart, and give me some hope, and to get me out of the mire. I'm glad, hallelujah, that we've got a holy Bible, an inerrant, infallible, the Word of God. The words will never pass away. It's my mouth. Gives me direction. It's my mirror. It's my meal. It's my meat. It's my message. 
to a lost and dying world. Thank God there's hope in the Bible. Love the Word of God, don't you? Everything I know about Him, I learned it in this book. Everything I know about the Holy Ghost, I learned it from this book. Everything I know about heaven, I learned it from this book. Everything I know, brother, about help and how to be happy, I learned it from this book, hallelujah. Thank God this book will convert your soul. This book will comfort you in sorrow. This book will clean up your life, hallelujah. Field and stream don't have the answer. Reader's Digest don't have the answer. USA Today don't have the answer. TV Guide don't have the answer. Amen. Newsweek and all the rest. Uh, but hallelujah, the Bible, the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Uh, it's got the answer. Amen. There's the answer uh, in this book. Somebody said, uh, oh, what's the question? Uh, it don't matter what the question is. It's got the answer. Hallelujah. Glory. I love the Bible, don't you? I like to pick it up and walk down through its pages. I like to splash in its rivers and drink from its waves. I like to swim in its ocean. I like to walk in its paths and climb on its mountains and smell its lilies and roses. I like to eat its honey, amen. Sometimes when I'm walking through the Bible, it's just me and old Adam, their name in the animals. Now sometimes when I'm walking through the Bible, it's just me and Abel uh, up there at the garden, uh, uh, sacrificing that animal uh, and hearing God say, I'll accept that. Uh, sometimes when I'm walking through the Bible, it's just me and Joseph dreaming dreams. Uh, uh, sometimes it's just me and old Jacob uh, uh, riding on that royal wagon. Uh, uh, Jacob talking about how he's going to see Joseph. Hallelujah. Uh, sometimes it's just me and Moses uh, uh, hiding in the cleft of the rock. Uh, I like the Word of God. Amen. Uh, sometimes it's just me and Aaron uh, uh, walking around that smoking altar, uh, uh, listening to the bells, uh, uh, smelling the uh, sacrifice, uh, uh, walking around in that Shekinah glory. Hey, hey, uh, I'm glad, uh, uh, brother, we've got the Word of God. Sometimes it's just me and Mephibosheth riding on that royal chariot looking for brother. Gary Duty. There he is. Sometimes, sometimes it's just me and old Isaiah standing over there watching a root grow up out of dry ground. <laughs> sometimes it's just me and Malachi watching and waiting for the Son of Righteousness to arrive with he and his way. Sometimes it's uh, Mary. Uh, me and Mary sitting over there in a barn in Bethlehem uh, watching a little old baby stretch uh, and yawn uh, and the brother would wiggle around. Uh, sometimes, hallelujah, uh, it's me and John uh, and Jesus walking down into the waters uh, of, J of Jordan uh, going to have a baptismal service, hallelujah. Uh, sometimes it's, uh, it's me and Mary breaking that alabaster box uh, and smelling that perfume uh, filled with glory divine. Uh, sometimes it's just me and old John uh, over yonder uh, laying on the bosom of the Lord uh, listening to the heartbeat of God. I like the Word of God. Sometimes it's me and Mary running back from the tomb screaming he's alive. Sometimes it's me and Paul and Silas singing in the midnight down in the Philippian day. Sometimes it's just me and old John on the Isle of Patmos walking in the midnight, singing.
thing in words is the lamb. <laughs> there's hell in the bread. There's hope in the Bible when you're in the mire. Some of you here tonight and you're lost and undone without hope, without God. And everywhere you look, there's doom and despair. But I'm glad in the pages of this old book, there's hope. Amen. And then, let me close with this right here. Jeremiah chapter 8 and verse 22. Not only is there hope in the bread, help in the brethren, hope in the Bible when you're sinking in the mire, but there's healing in the bar. He said in Jeremiah 8 and 22, he said, Is there no bomb in Gilead? I'm glad I can report to you this evening there's a bomb in Gilead. They say that bomb only came from a certain tree on a certain mountain. They said that uh, tree uh, grew on the slopes of Mount Gilead. And physicians would come from all around. And they'd set up their practices around that mountain. And uh, they'd get that, uh, they'd get that uh, bomb. That bomb was a salve-like substance, a rosin-like substance. Uh, and uh, they'd get it much like they get the, uh, the, the syrup out of those maple trees. Uh, uh, they'd take and pierce that tree uh, and the brother from that pierced tree uh, would flow this balm of Gilead. Uh, that reminds me, uh, brother Van, that reminds me of another mountain. Uh, that reminds me of another tree in the Bible. Uh, brother, where one was pierced uh, and the flow uh, that started from that mountain, uh, brother, can make the violent sinner clean. Uh, there's a fountain filled with blood that grows from Emmanuel's veins. And thank God uh, it'll cure any disease uh, brother, that plagues the soul of man. Uh, thank God there's healing in the barn. On a hill far away is an old rugged cross. There's where our healing comes from, boy. They say that bomb was so easy to use that even a little child could apply it. Hey, hey. They say that bomb was so powerful that it started healing and soothing the very instant it was applied. <laughs> there ain't no hope in the physicians of this world You'll be like that lady over there in Mark chapter 5. You'll try all the world's position. Uh, you'll spend all that you have. Uh, but you'll rather grow worse and none the better. Uh, but if you can just ever get to Dr. Jesus, hallelujah. Uh, he ain't never lost a patient. Uh, he makes no charge for his service. Uh, and uh, he's never lost a case. Amen. He'll, he'll touch you. He'll take that bomb. Comfort your soul. There's healing at Calvary. He healed my heart at Calvary. Johannesburg, South Africa, 1965. A Jewish man, it might have been 67, 67. A Jewish man, 55 years old, was dying with incurable heart disease. And this girl, 19 year old girl was in an automobile wreck and they said she was brain dead and they and, and they rolled her body up next to that uh, 55 year old Jewish man, they opened up their chest cavities, took out that 19 year old girl's heart and uh, took out that diseased heart of that uh, Jewish man, uh, uh, put that heart of that young girl in his chest uh, uh, done all the necessary things uh, I uh, sold him up, started, uh, put that electric shock to him, uh, and that heart started beating. 
and the wire went around the world uh, that the first successful heart transplant had been done. Uh, but I'm telling you, friend, uh, that God's been doing successful heart transplants uh, uh, for thousands of years. Hallelujah. Uh, 31 years ago, uh, he took an old diseased heart. Uh, I was dying of heart disease. Uh, uh, but he took that old diseased heart out. Uh, and brother, he gave me a heart that could feel after God. Uh, a heart, brother, that could know a little bit uh, about the love of God. Hey, hey. Glory. Glad there's healing at Calvary. Heal my home at Calvary. I tell you, he's put more homes back together than all the marriage counselors combined. Amen. Took some of you out of the gutters. Made daddies out of drunkards and housewives out of harlots. Put a home together, buddy. That healing balm. There's a, there's a balm in Gilead. Old man tried to commit suicide 11 times. He stumbled into a meeting like this and he got saved and in the first year and a half he read his Bible through eight times. And after a year and a half of serving God he sat down one night and wrote there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's face. And sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilt and stain. The dying thief rejoiced to see that fountain in his day. And there may I, though vile as he, wash all my sin away. Thank God there is a bond in Gilead. There's healing. He'll touch your wounded soul and spirit tonight. He'll give you life and hope and joy. Some of you tonight, let's bow our heads please for just a minute.